mission of the church, the ecclesia of God, the community of God meant to bring light into this dark world, the community of God commissioned and empowered with the gospel message. The mission of God this past week, I was doing some reading about the historical church and specifically in the first century. And what was said about the ecclesia of God in their mission, what they were about, and I love it, because here's what they said in their findings as they were trying to figure out and investigate the movement of Jesus. They said the people who follow Jesus, they get together the first day of the week to sing a song to Jesus and to rededicate themselves to Jesus and to his teaching of how to love their neighbors, how to sacrifice for their neighbors, how to suffer for their neighbors, how to be servants for their neighbors. This is what the ecclesia of God, the church of God was about then. And the question is, is this still what we are about now? Are we dedicated to Jesus and to loving our, our neighbors in a, in a servant fashion, in a merciful fashion, in a forgiving fashion? This is what the first church was known for. They weren't known for being feisty, for fighting back. They were known for their humble hearts, their posture of love towards their neighbors because this is the Savior that they knew face to face and this is what he taught them. And so last week, if you turned into our devotional midweek time, you knew I talked a little bit about where we are and the proposal of, of praying, praying in the political nature of our, of our world in the climate that we are in. And I encourage you not just to pray, but I encourage you to read Matthew chapter 5 through 7 and so as we think about rededicating ourselves to Jesus, not just because it's politics and political season, but because this is what we do all the time. This is what those who've gone before us do all the time. Let's rededicate ourselves to his teaching. And so I'm going to read a few of his teachings from what is called the Sermon on the Mount, the Gospel of Matthew, which in fact we are beginning a sermon series this week on the four Gospels and the call of what it means to be a disciple in the four Gospels. And so this Sunday we're actually on Matthew, but here's what Matthew says in this sermon about the teachings of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kind of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you, they are persecuting you. And then Jesus goes on to say, You are the salt of the earth, but the salt loses its saltiness. How can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under, under a bowl. And so they put it on its stand and give light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good deeds, your acts of love, your acts of humility, your acts of suffering because you are a servant to all, just like Jesus. And they would praise your Father in heaven. And then Jesus also says this, You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who vote differently than you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And then Jesus also says this, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, or what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and a body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? And then he says, O oh, you of little faith, O oh, you of little faith, why do you worry? He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus has a lot to say in the Sermon on the Mount, and I love how he concludes it in the Gospel of Matthew. Anyone who hears my words and puts them into practice, like a wise man who built his house on the rock, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation 
on the rock. I pray that our foundation, just like those living in the first century, is on the rock of Jesus and that we continue to live like him and like those who followed him so closely that we would be known for the way that we love and the way that we serve our neighbors. This week, pray that you're blessed and I pray you continue to fall under allegiance and obedience to Jesus, the one who gave his life up for you and for me. Be blessed. We hope you're able to worship with us this weekend.